Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back uh, from the new year, or should I say happy new year, and I hope everyone had a peaceful, productive holiday season. Um, and thank you in advance for the commissioners, elected officials, appointed officials, and directors and employees, and most importantly, uh, importantly, the citizens of Douglas County. Thank you for your time, your talent, and tenacity with moving Douglas County forward in a unified man manner in 2020. Um, I would like to pub publicly thank Mr. Bill Peacock for uh, his many years of service, and he retired over the holiday season. Not sure if many of our directors had an opportunity to wish him a farewell, but I had an opportunity to have breakfast with him, and uh, he said he wished us well. Um, I would like to introduce our new director, uh, which is, uh, she's here today, it's Don Evers. And uh, Don, if you would like to just uh, have a few remarks as our new purchasing director. I called her in advance and let her know I may ask for sure. Yes, I did. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Madam Chair, Board of Commissioners, and the County Administrator, I'd just like to say thank you for this opportunity. I look forward to working in this capacity with everyone. All right, well, thank you. Welcome. We will be uh, running a press release on Don Evers real soon. Our communications department has been notified. I have notified them well. I'm quite sure and confident that she will serve this administration well, and also she will serve the citizens of Douglas County well. So thank you again, Don, for being here today. Uh, Board of Commissioners, uh, again, thank you for being here. We have a quorum, so I'm going to get started. Uh, we have public comment. Uh, Clerk, do we have anyone signed up? We have three individuals who signed up this morning, and I'll start off with uh, Ms. Sharon Buckle. I hope I'm saying it right. I always <coughs> thank you for being here this morning and, and chatting. Our protocol is civility, and um, so do you have three minutes? Three minutes, uh, and then when you reach your three minute mark, if you exceed that, I'll just make you aware of it. If you just give me your name and address before we start. Mm -hmm. Sharon Battle, 6331 South Skyline Drive, Douglasville. I came back today to set the record straight on my comments at the last meeting. I felt like I was lambasted for 15 minutes for something I did not say. I did not say the commissioners should not use their expense accounts for transportation. I did not say the commissioners should not raise their expense accounts to $500. What I said was use the taxpayers' money wisely. <coughs> Thus, the comparison of $35 for a taxi to a dollar for public transit. I don't understand why the commissioners who wanted buses don't want to use the buses. Next, I would like to ask the commission why they would pay a part-time assistant $50,000 a year, which comes to $33 an hour. A certified full-time deputy sheriff starts at $41,841 a year, or $19.15 an hour. A part-time EMT gets $16.84 an hour, and a part-time paramedic gets $18.56 an hour. These people have, these people save lives and risk their own lives for us. Are they not worth more to the county than someone who answers emails and sets up town halls? How many town halls are you planning on having? When I send an email to my commissioner, I want to be answered by my commissioner, not an assistant. I would like to also comment on Empower Douglas. I object to giving $25,000 from our contingency fund to an organization that did not give a presentation to the commission or public. There was no information presented on this group and no contract. How do we know what we will receive in return for these funds? Also, there was no opportunity given to the public to comment on this before you voted. Where is the transparency? Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Bacco. We'll take your, uh, this matter under advisement. Appreciate you coming in this morning. Next, we have Mr. C.J. Nutter. Ms. Nutter, if you could please go to the podium and restate your name and give us your address. And your subject matter is school guards. My hearing's not so good, so I'm not so sure what you said. Okay. But my name is C.J. Nutter. And I live at 7806 Ponderosa Trace in Winston, Georgia. Uh, I'm here to just to discuss for a minute the decision that was made to give the commissioners assistance 
when they ran for an office that um, didn't have assistance when they ran for the office. They asked for the job, and the people of the county elected them to, to do that job. And at the peril of leaving our children unprotected, um, 17 of our schools and elementaries do not have security guards. I, I have to say thank you to Mr. North for taking up the slack and to try to put together a, a police department for the school board. It's going to be astronomical in cost. Whenever you start looking at the cost of an officer, all of his equipment, his training, um, it's going to cost a lot of money. And the teachers need raises in our county so that we can compete with the counties that's around us who have the police departments. It grieves me to think that a small child would be sitting in a classroom and some crazy come in and start trying to shoot them up. I went to school to get my granddaughter one day and my wife was going to go in and pick her up and I was waiting outside. There was a lady in front of my wife who pushed the button, they took her picture, and she and my wife both went in. No one ever questioned my wife as to who she was there and what she was there for. It's not a good secure system that we have now. <clears throat> Shortly after I first started talking about this and started talking to people, I realized that by putting it out into the public and getting the parents to support this, that we were jeopardizing the lives of our children. Because anybody who's crazy enough to carry a gun into a school is smart enough to try to figure out where the soft targets are. I'm a military person. I retired from the military. And one of the things that you first want to try to do is secure your soft targets. And what they just did by putting this in the newspaper and telling the whole county that we have 17 schools that are unprotected, they just opened up soft targets. They just said, okay, if you're crazy enough to do this, you're invited to come on in. It's beyond me how the commissioners could actually vote to not protect our, our children. Shortly after this, there was an article in the newspaper about a third grader who was a hero. And the reason he was a hero is another third grader carried a 9 millimeter pistol into the school in a backpack. This was in Florida. He was bragging and he showed this pistol to one of his classmates and the classmate immediately realized that this was a danger that needed to be taken care of. He didn't go to his teacher. He didn't go to the principal. He went to the resource officer who was a uniformed police officer to tell him what was going on. They went to the classroom. They got the child out and they found a loaded nine millimeter in a backpack. He was telling the kids how he was going to shoot people. That kid needed help. And he went to the resource officer to get that help. I don't know if there's anything that can be done, but to dump the load onto Dr. or Mr. North, to come up with the money to do this, just isn't the way it should happen. Whenever we need help and protection, we call the Sheriff's Department, we call the Police Department, we call the people who are trained to do these jobs to come in and to try to train all of these people up for these 17 schools is crazy. I know that there's, there's not an understanding of what's going on. I talked to a judge that was, was here and he and I was just at the day that we had the Super Saturdays or whatever we were here. And I mentioned to him about this problem because I figured and he wanted to justify why we had these people in high schools and middle schools and not in elementary <coughs> schools. And I knew right then that he didn't understand. Elementary school kids are 
just as capable <coughs> of carrying out tragedy. Just look at our history. Where they go in and it's all over the news how these people go in and shoot up these schools. It's terrible. And to try to look at a little person who's six or seven years old in the eyes and say you're not protected, to me is a sin. And it should be taken seriously. And we need to have it. I don't think, when we discussed this, I discussed it with Dr. Jones, I discussed it with the sheriff, and also discussed it with Mr. North and his security people. Every one of them agreed that we needed to put the money in the budget. When they went to their, to their work session, which I thought was pretty much a binding thing, they all five agreed that we needed to do this. Then we come back and three people changed their mind. And they decided to put our children at risk. It's terrible. I guess I'm through, but my heart goes out to the families. I hope that they start responding to these elected officials and tell them the decision they just made is wrong. And it's the parents of these children that are going to make a difference. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Miller. So let me take this matter in advice. We appreciate you coming in today. Last, last but not least, we have Mr. Larry Pierce. Mr. Pierce, if you could come forward. Thanks. Restate your name and give us your address and your subject matter today is assistant. <coughs> Larry Pierce, 4120 Van Sant Road, Douglasville, Georgia. I sure am glad you two people preceded me because I'm going to open up a can of worms about that. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> since 21st of December, I, I meet with Martins every day with a bunch of guys, 10 to 20 people, and I've been getting hit on trying to explain things. I usually do a pretty good job, but, you know, they say, what good does it do? Well, I'm here, and fortunately, there's two others before me. So, I want to open up your eyes about a few things. Now, in regards to the children, I don't have one right now. Unless I get remarried and some accident happens, but I had one at one time. I mean, I, I have. He's 44. But they're right even though statistically shows it may not occur in certain regions. That's true. But let me just tell you something right here. When you talk about Mr. Bussey, who the coroner has part-time, that the grand jury said get rid of, y'all haven't done that. And he gets $15 an hour, and according to your laws here in the county, part-time is 30 hours or less. If you pay a retired officer 15 an hour for 48 hours, it comes out to about 600 a week. The school year is 36 weeks, comes out to 21,600. 17 schools, multiply that, comes out to 367,000, okay? Keep that in mind now, 367,000 for retired officers that could take care of 17 schools. On the other hand, y'all voted in three assistants Three assistants. Madam Chair, you did not. You wasn't in favor of it. Thank you. Madam Guider, you wasn't in favor of it. Thank you. But let me tell you what I found out here. Bill Posey taught me a long time ago, when you don't know what's happening, you go to the book. Now this is not a law book, but it's Robert Rules of Order. And I'm sitting somewhere where I do some homework studying in a private little room, and it says here, under Article 6, voting 38 to 9, 39.1. No one can vote on a question affecting himself. That means the three who voted is out. And the two that voted for the, po for the, for the positive, it carries. Now, I found out that, ma'am, you said you had a business. You had nine employees. Uh, Mr. Carathen, here, our district uh, 
Commissioner, you said you had nine employees and you might need help. Well, let me tell you something. You ran for office. Mr. And you know Pierce, what it is to run for office? You, Mr. Pierce, we won't allow you to attack. Well, I'll tell you what. Commissioners, you can't do that. I know what's going on. Yes, sir. They only know a little bit because they only come up here one time. But y'all have got to stop this or there's going to be a lot more affections. So people do not need to be hired. And I think the attorney can look it up. And if it's wrong, you got to go back and take it away. You do not need three assistants that got four pages of qualifications and to run for office all you got to do is be an 18 year old sensible and live in Douglas County that's it that's it so am I worked up yes because somebody's got to be worked up in this county yes, thank you thank you so much Mr. Peters we'll take this matter and advise me but what I will not allow you to do is attack the commissioners you can't do that you can chat about anything other than and I made that very clear and I may have to start uh, reading my, my script again, but I was under the impression that we knew the script, but I'll, I, I can do that again. All right, what I want to do now, we've heard everybody today, we'll take all your concerns, citizens, uh, under advisement, and I appreciate you being here today. Um, we, I want to just kind of move around a little bit. For commissioners, please be prepared to look at your minutes tomorrow, the approval of your minutes, Thank and you. we will approve accordingly. Um, Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah, just one, one, one minute. I, I wanted to at least acknowledge the comments about the school board. Because I, I, I think sometimes um, in the love of the county that we all have, there's different ways to get to the same end. <clears throat> to get there, there must be communication. You can't get to consensus without communication. Right? Right. So, yeah, I appreciate the citizen who made the comment the difference between Monday and Tuesday. Right? Well, you need communication to get to consensus. To get to consensus, you gotta get to three. There's no way around that. Now it's not just saying that we could not have gotten there, but the lack of communication, the lack of well, you gotta give concessions. Concessions was made to not take away all the high school and the school. That was my vote. That was my position alone. That it should have been school board. I own that because, like, where are we in this? But I had to acknowledge my peers. And says, no, let's transition that. Pay attention. You have to work within the context of everybody's opinion. Right. This is last point. Is the state requires us to work with the cities through what's called the Service Delivery Agreement, an SDS, um, and after that, loss. In other words, we have to agree with the city, both city council and board of commissioners, full bodies, <coughs> must work together to figure out what, what type of services are we going to provide. We do this every 10 years, right? And we have to, I think last time, it was 66 functions of general government. That's basically everybody reports to Mark. Keep it simple. Everybody report to Mark. Take the sheriff, take all of them out. But it's basic stuff. 66 functions, we have to negotiate, right? Then we figure out how we're gonna pay for it after the fact through a loss, um, loss agreement, right? For those who haven't been here long enough to understand how that works, the state requires us to work with those municipalities to give a share of that, that, that penny over on that side. It does not require us to do it with the school board. Don't do that. Don't do that. It does not require us to do that. Now, you could have gotten there. We, we, we could have gotten there. I mean, I, I mean, I was in a position where I do this. The most I would be willing, if anybody heard me, was maybe you could have put up 20% since they're 5 to 1. No, I'll put down 20%, maybe they put up 80. But <coughs> because there's no communication, alternatives could not be arrived. Don't do that. Don't sit here and expose my kids, your kids, to a political conversation about exposure. When we're in that work session, y'all want to downplay this? We said, okay, we get it, we understand. But there still was no hearing of hearing. So we come out <coughs> and it's like, okay, so when do we get to give input to this process? It's a collective body. It's collective. Right, so I want, I, I mean, obviously this is something that we, we it's important. Right, there's a number of ways we could have gotten there. Right? Don't do that. Right? It requires communication. I mean, I appreciate what y'all think we should be doing. Right? But okay, then, then listen to it. 
right? That's really, if the sheriff would walk through that door and said, hey, I want to do this, and we'd be like, okay, sheriff. Like, we've always honored the sheriff, consistently. Body cameras, 7.5% raise, don't question my support, personally, my vote regarding public safety. It doesn't move. But how you want to get there, you try to, uh, to try to put in play an old memorandum, memorandum of understanding between, I'm like, okay, why are y'all doing that that way? I'm not saying that it was illegal. It's like, my vote just not going to do it that way. If that's what the old sheriff, the old chair, and the old director of superintendent <coughs> schools did, that's fine. That doesn't bind me in my one vote. Don't do that. Right, so now you've got to be open to new minds, new directions, new ideas. There's no dictates. There's no binding of the past. And by the way, you can change your mind 12 times going up to the time you press that button. Don't do that because it's all about real-time information. you got different people with different ideas that's going on with this. Don't do that. Don't marginalize how we approach this. It's complex. It's moving parts. So I, I, I think we, let's let that go, Madam Chair. I think, I think that needs to be addressed. I don't want to politicize that kid thing. Y'all broached this. Y'all politicized this. You should have never did that. Should have. I mean, now, now we put us in a, a collision course with our school board. That was the wrong approach to a very. If you really were concerned about that, school safety, national security, all that, then you know that that was. You should not approach it that way. You should not have politicized that in the moment like that, and catch everybody off guard. That was the wrong approach. So I appreciate all the, the, the military and everybody. Never politicize money. <clears throat> never politicize children. Don't do that. Communicate. It could have been a much better thing, but don't, 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 don't perpetrate. Don't put an avatar up and do it and say, what, what, what happened? Don't do that. I respect all of you. I respect the schools. I respect all of this. We could have gotten there, but okay, it requires communication. Okay, so let's be sensitive. Let, let's, let's let that go and let them go ahead and do what they have to do. But don't, don't make this about board of commissioners. That wasn't our responsibility. Don't do that. I you? Okay, thank you so much, uh, Vice Chair. And certainly this is a moment where we all have differences of opinion, and so we'll move on. Uh, communications is key. Certainly may be, a, be an opportunity for us to sit, uh, I guess, renegotiate, rediscuss, uh, because we have a couple of things at hand. We have time on our hand and also costs related to this big movement. Uh, about our SROs, and I don't want to keep talking about it. The chair will be willing to come in and chat with the board of commissioners as well. Uh, I did chat with him after our meeting, and he said, why didn't you call me? I thought, oh, I just told him I didn't have time in the heat of the moment to call him, so I'm quite sure he'll be chatting with us as well. So anyway, we'll move on, and I want to just put a pin in that until we come back at a later date. Board of commissioners, let's move on. To, again, like I mentioned, we have approval of the minutes tomorrow. Please take a look at those, and we'll go forward. Um, today, uh, we have a resolution uh, by Tiffany Stewart Stanley. Tiffany, if you could just go with the resolution and then I'll come back to the presentation. Oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, please. <coughs> oh, okay. Is it just a say? Well, <laughs> well, I had a presentation too, but, um, well, um, on November 21st of 2019, we met with our state delegation and uh, we prepared and presented a proposed uh, 2020 state and federal legislative agenda um, and so the commissioners have copies today but there were copies emailed prior to November 21st and um, so the resolution is just asking the board board to approve the uh, proposed 2020 state and federal legislative agenda so we can use this as a strategic plan <coughs> going forward for the 2020 year um, in order to make sure that we let our representatives know on the state and federal level what the issues are that are important to Douglas County. That's the resolution. Yeah. You have a presentation? I, I mean, I, it's like 35 slides, so <laughs> it's up to you. If, if you guys would show like to see some of the slides. Okay. <clears throat> While she's preparing the presentation, I'm going to move on to tab number five. Uh, and I just want to honor and respect our judge here this morning, uh, Judge Barker. This authorization to approve a yearly contract with the Judicial Alternatives of Georgia Incorporation, JAG, for the misdemeanor, <coughs> misdemeanor 
probation services for the state court and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. Judge Barth, if you could just tell this us. This is the standard contract that we have with our private probation provider. Um, it's the same contract we've had for the last several years. I think the only change was the change in the salary for the one probation officer that's provided to the accountability court that was approved in the budget uh, last month. So okay. other than that, unless anybody has any questions, it's, it's like I said, it's our okay. contract we've been. We have uh, one question for okay. Commissioner Robinson. Commissioner Robinson. Good morning, Judge. Good morning. How are you? Good. Good. How are you? Doing good. Real quick, you and I have been, been, uh, we've been involved in this and you've been driving this for quite some time. But just, uh, again, probation, um, are we satisfied with the service? That Absolutely. We're you, you know where I'm going, so just help, help yes, give sir. context to that, please. Um, that, well, this, you know, we had a, a previous private probation <coughs> provider that uh, felt like provided subpar service. So we, we know what that looks like. And since we, pr we switched over to JAG a few years ago, uh, they've been very attentive to uh, the needs of the court. Uh, they work with the solicitor's office as well as the public defender's office. They routinely go to the jail to try to serve petitions and work out consents and try to get folks in and out of jail as quickly as we can when it's appropriate. So um, they've always been responsive uh, when, when Ms. Peterson is uh, needed. She's right across the street if we have an issue that arises. So we've been very satisfied with the, the level of service they've given us. So and again, and that was the key thing. Um, uh, sometimes we ask, what, what is our return on investment? What what what, what do we get out of, of, of this? And we have a situation um, prior, um, early on, where, um, and this was a, a large firm that was providing services throughout the state uh, for probation. And um, so it wasn't just Douglas County, it was consistency of of, um, expectations were not met and so the judge did a good job of helping us revisit that was there ever a consideration of bringing probation in-house or I know we, we were not doing it but what was what was wrong with bringing it in-house I mean was there any benefit or what was it what was the decision that you were able to make well right. we we decided uh, back when we were having the Sentinel issue we actually considered looking into in-house uh, uh, Judge Deckery and I worked with Mark we were actually looking for locations, I believe, and uh, I had gotten a lot of information from several other counties that had recently went in-house. And so we had all that information, but after looking at what it was going to entail and the actual cost to the county, uh, we, we believed if we had a good private probation provider, um, and so we decided to try this company. Had, they, had this company failed, we probably would have looked uh, if we had not gotten the improvement in the level of services that we got, it would have been something we would looked at. But pr bringing private probation in house would have been a massive undertaking, and at best, it would I believe been a break-even uh, proposition for the county. So it, it was uh, I believe uh, one of those decisions where it's best left to private probation <coughs> because it's, it's not costing the county hardly any money at all. Um, like I said, the, what, what cost is, is through the accountability court, actually, and providing a service to our accountability court that we have. And, and I'll just my last one, we try to keep a cost being three at a time, um, which is, you know, when you talk about the privatization of, of anything, right? In other words, you privatize things that are not your core competence and stuff, in essence, or there's greater efficiency that can be arrived. Um, but when I'm listening to privatization of, probation. I mean, I know you said it was a break even if we brought it in house, but if we outsource it, we know that that company is for profit. Therefore, they're going to make money. <coughs> Therefore, we know we're paying margins on that, but which is okay. Uh, it, it, so, so then it becomes, well, what is probation? Right? We, you know, we, we, I would never support a privatization of a jail, but let, let's just say for the sake of the conversation that, okay, so this is probation. What we're paying this firm every month for, for these number of people, whatever, whatever exchange is supposed to be done. So is it, is there some type of, you know, we talk about training or information, I mean, what, what is probation anyway? I mean, because I've, I've never had to do it, I don't know. Well, of course, you know, this is mandated under Georgia law. It's one of the sentencing alternatives that the courts have, and it arises when some individuals, in lieu of being put in the county jail, uh, 
uh, they're placed on a period of time of probation with certain conditions, depending on the offense. Um, you know, there's different standards for folks that may be under for DUI as opposed to, you know, other offenses for speeding or whatever it, it may be. Uh, in state court, we have a broad range of different criminal offenses that we have to deal with. And the uh, solicitor's office uh, makes initial determination in what appropriate sentences should be. You know, 99 plus percent of the cases brought before our court are already negotiated by the solicitor and then the defendant or their attorney. And so, you know, our job as the judge is to make sure it's an appropriate sentence. Part of that is, proba is probation and, you know, it involves collections of fines and fees and surcharges. It may be community service. It may be um, alcohol and drug counseling, mental health counseling. There's all kinds of conditions and probation is a method to assure that people are staying out of trouble by regularly reporting that maybe they're maintaining employment or finding employment. They're passing drug tests and they're meeting those conditions that hopefully we put on them to try to improve their lives and, and make them better citizens. And the vast majority of people on probation are successful. You know, not everybody uh, makes it on probation. There's folks that continue to come through the system, but the vast majority of people are successful. They do what they're supposed to do and we never see them again. And so that's the purpose of probation. And that's what happens. These people report, you know, a couple times a month at the most, maybe once a month. If they're from out of county, they usually they may report by mail or by phone. Uh, and that's their, the probation officer's job is to keep up with that. And those, those individual officers, you know, they usually have, I think, a couple hundred people on their caseload. They have to maintain regular contact with those people. So that's the purpose <coughs> of, of probation and what level of supervision is going on for those people. I'm not sufficient. Thank you, Judge. I'm sure I do. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Carter. All right. Thank you very much. <coughs> Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. That's okay. Uh, Judge Parker, have you spoken with the solicitor's office um, recently regarding JAG and what their thoughts are? Since 99% of the cases that come before you are from the solicitor's office in regards to probation. I wouldn't say recently. We've had, we have discussions about probation. I've, I've talked to Ms. Dawson, Ms. Compton um, a number of times in the last year. Uh, about probation matters, but to my knowledge, they've not. You know, we, we did have a meeting, Ms. Dallas, was that back in the summer when we met with Ms. Peterson? And we talked about the, the process that we have in, in place now. So we, we have had meetings and discuss mm -hmm. how, you know, the processes will work in relation where, where JAG interacts with the solicitors. There's a lot of communication between the solicitor's office and probation about recommendations in case and what cases, how cases should be prepared, if there have to be hearings and stuff. I don't generally get involved in that part of it until it comes into the courtroom. Gotcha. But we have had a couple of meetings over the last year just to make sure everybody's on the same page as far as the process on how things should be done. Um, you know, we, we there were some growing pains with a new solicitor's office coming in and with JAG because there was the old solicitor's office did some things differently than the new solicitor's office wanted to do. So we had to work through that, and I think the last several months we, we managed to make some of those changes and implement some of the things that we've talked about. Okay. Um, do you mind coming up, Ms. Dawson, just kind of share, if you don't mind? Um, do, you to, do you mind just sharing, you know, the, the JAG process? Are you, are you guys? Or you and the solicitor at Compton okay with uh, going forward with the JAG contract? Is there some things we need to look at and some concerns that maybe we should address? Oh, we would ask that the board stay as hand. Um, I am sitting as proxy. Okay. Um, I'm not presuming to speak for the, for the solicitor general. <coughs> um, she is um, in Luke, but she had a medical okay. situation, and so that's why she's not here. She asked me to step in. But I would ask that the board stay its hand in making any decision on this matter until the Solicitor General has had an opportunity to weigh in. Okay. And she and certainly can do that. I would just point out that the decision of private probation and who they use the contract lies in myself. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mr. Bernard will confirm that. Do we have it? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 
Yes, thank you so much, Jeff. All right. Appreciate thank you, you very much. this morning. All right, we're going to move on. We could take okay. just a couple of slides and then we'll move on. Okay, I'm sorry. I got resolution and presentation confused uh, over the weekend. So, um, so for the 2020 Douglas County State and Federal Legislative Agenda, I'm going to start off with, um, I mentioned that we met with our delegation on November 21st, uh, 2019, and presented the uh, State and Federal Legislative Agenda to our state delegation. Um, next week, on January 13th, the general session begins for the General Assembly. So the state and legislative priorities, and I'm just going to hit the new ones for this year, um, collection of sales tax on remote and online sales. That's been part of our agenda for the past couple of years. Um, but this year, there are some new things um, that are being focused on. One of them is the hotel motel tax collections, as well as rental car excise tax collections. Um, expand behavioral health support and provide appropriate mental health services. That's something that's also always been a part of our agenda. Um, and right now, there are no bills um, pending that um, are that we are monitoring at this time. Fees on property bills. Um, we are still fighting that battle to keep those fees on the uh, property bills because in Douglas County we do do the street lights. So that's a battle that my, we are fighting as well as all the other counties in Georgia. Homeowner protections. Um, this is something that uh, State Representative William Bodie and Senator Donzella James, as well as Commissioner Robinson, has been looking for the General Assembly to give some guidance on for the past couple of years. Representative Bodie does have a resolution to try to get a study committee on homeowners associations, condominium associations, and property owners um, in community associations. Local design standard preemptions. This is a this <coughs> was in um, it came about last year, and what this does is it prohibits cities and counties from regulating building design elements um, in single or double family dwellings. So Douglas County does support um, maintaining our right to control um, our community's design guidelines. Um, and so right now there are two bills, HB 302, SB 172, that um, address those issues, and. Um, Director Worthington um, presented in front of the Board of Commissioners on December 2nd, and I believe the Board of Commissioners adopted a resolution on December, December 3rd opposing those bills. Um, public notification of tax increase. This was a, um, a priority that Commissioner Mitchell brought to our attention last year, and this is also part of our uh, agenda for this year. Um, this is also a priority for Commissioner Guider. Restoring the motor fuel excise tax exemption for local governments. Um, as we know, back in 2015 with HB 170, um, that bill took away the local government's right to be exempt from uh, the motor fuel excise tax. So we are asking, as, long as, as well as ACCG this year, that that be restored. Um, something new, sales tax to offset property tax on things like digital music, books, videos, um, that helps to reduce the reliance on property taxes. There is one bill, HB 428, that we will be monitoring and um, trying to make sure that that bill passes. And then the telecommunications excise tax, um, we are asking that current franchise fees and taxes on telecommunication services be um, replaced with revenues and that the local taxes should be split between the counties and cities. Um, using a population formula. And then there's already HB 420 also addresses this issue. And then once again, we're asking for more money to come to the county from the tag for tags and titles. Um, funding requests, um, we still have the same funding requests for the I-20, I-285 interchange, um, funding for the Bright Star Bridge, I-20 corridor, <coughs> and also Lee Road. A new one for this year um, is just getting funding for setting, planning, and design and construction of operational improvements to the Chapel Hill Road, um, from Chapel Hill Road to Hospital Drive to improve traffic safety and flow in Douglas County. Um, driver's license facility, that's been part of our agenda for the past couple of years. We're finally getting some movement on that. Um, the county administrator is working with um, Senator Dugan's staff um, so we can get some information to him to pop possibly have this information included in the budget for this year. So I'll be giving an update on that as we go further. Um, new this year, um, Douglas County supports funding for a new county library which will help preserve access to information for residents. Um, this is um, Commissioner Carthen's priority. 
I have a, um, just I guess it's a proposal for some things that will be included in the new library. Um, and I believe this would go in District 3. Okay. So you can see that as part of your agenda. Um, senior Center funding, um, Douglas County supports funding to renovate the Douglas County, County Senior Center. Um, myself and um, Director Gilchrist, we did go and meet the DCA, so we're working on some things to possibly get some funding to renovate the Senior Center. And then for the federal agenda, there's just one new one this year, um, and it has to do with the Medicaid, Medicare, federal benefit exclusion. Right now, if a person comes into our county jail and they're detained and they're in custody, Medicaid or Medicare will not pay for any of their treatments um, that they may need while they're in jail. So that's falling back on the taxpayer. So we are, as well as ACCG and NACO, we're supporting um, to have that exclusion removed. Um, and there are two U.S. Senate bills that address that issue. They're still in the committee, the Finance Committee for the Senate, but there, is, there are two bills that address that. So that's it. I have three important questions or comments for this morning. Commissioner Robinson, please. Yeah, uh, just two real quick. Uh, the home ownership or homeowner, we'll, we'll call it that way, the state representative Bodie um, has, has been very instrumental in trying to move that forward. I mean, and again, I'm the commissioner of district two. And so in District 2, we have, um, we have a, a bunch of neighborhoods. And in those neighborhoods, there are neighbors. It's not about friends. They're neighbors. And, and, and through that, there are common issues, common aspirations, but also common issues, especially when you have neighborhoods that have, have, have been master planned. Right? So we're saying subdivisions versus non-subdivisions. And, 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 and there is um, a state uh, <coughs> um, uh, power for them to manage themselves and through some relationship with the developer, in which we have um, basically a homeowner association, it's like a commission or city council in the neighborhood level. They get to govern themselves. And one of the things I was concerned about was in, in watching this play out over the years um, and, and also being involved in those um, HOA is um, the lack of, of, one, transparency on the financials, um, and two, um, the, the amateur niche in running meetings. This is important. And so I wear my pen quite well, because when you guys send me to training every year uh, down to Savannah, I take my classes seriously. I commend Commissioner Carthy and knock that thing out in one year. It probably took me two years. She knocked out in one year. She gets to get her pen. You educate us to know what we're doing. When, you're, when, you, when I have to come in here, right, part time, 66 functions of government. I ain't just the sheriff office. I ain't just the judges. I got to know everything. So I got to go get training, right? And that's important to understand the wholeness. So here you are at the local level, is that I say, wow. And we take it for granted, but you know, some people come from corporations, and some people made it work for PT, did in PTAs, and but there's there's <coughs> inconsistency in understanding. Because I can just sit back as an educator, and say, okay, if I had to grade all these people, it's like, okay, <coughs> wow, okay, that's an A. That group is A. That one needs a lot of improvement, right? And so there's no standard of expectation across the board. Now, while I know that you guys started with the HOA as volunteers who care about our community, there needs to be a degree of uniformity. There has to be a degree of certification. Else, because when you start dealing with money, just like with us, it's about trust. I'm looking at that and like, wow, there's no cover. It's like, wow. I mean, I mean, I mean really, you have these presidents that are hijacking and dictating, and it's like, wow. And then they get their lawyers in there, and then they're, 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 they're like, wow, look at this. Now you gotta look at it from my perspective. And I'm watching the behavior that's played out within our, within our neighbors. I mean, it ain't about District 2, it's District 4, it's District 3. So one of the things I think is important beyond, um, th there has to be a level of, of education. If you're an officer, you should be going through a, a, a training. You need to be certified, right? And there has to be a trust. There has to be, just like with us, transparency. You gotta make those financials available. Don't, don't, I mean, me and Madam Guy, we were just 
same room, same time. But I was like, wow, it's, it's common. We're all neighbors. <coughs> all neighbors. It had nothing to do with partisan, nothing to do with anything. They're like, we all want the same thing. Right? So my, in this one, I'm, I'm shooting for um, a, a provision that allows uh, true certification through ed true education and also elections that are like, yes, you have provisions of elections, but who's holding accountable to do it? And I, I think it's so unfair. I mean, it hurts me to watch my own neighbors like, oh, wow. Now, I got the knowledge to deal with it, but it's like, okay, that's not my job, but it's because it's a simple matter. But I think it's something because it's at the state level, uh, it, it, can, it, can, it can be fixed through something as simple as that, requiring people to go through certification, make sure that they're educated, make sure they have templates and stuff to use um, that will allow them to do their meetings and stuff. I mean, you talk about Robert Fools Board, the prior chairman gave all of us, uh, Fish got it all as a Christmas gift, he gave us a Bible one year, the Robert's Rules of Order in the second one. Right, Robert's Rules of Order, got it, understood. But I, I'm saying that to say that this is something that, that really I mean, a lot of other stuff was technical and it was great, but that matters, man. It's nothing. I mean, it hurts me to watch neighbors go at each other. I mean, I mean, I sat up there and the one with Mount Gardner, they got their hands in each other's faces, and I'm watching this like, oh my God, look at this. And then I'm, I'm like, and Tiffany's in there, and I'm like, look at this. But they're 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 they're, they're, they're yearning for the very thing that you try to hold us accountable for. You're 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 exposed to the very same thing. It's it's about standards. So it's something that I'm hopeful that, that you, um, I'll get to speak this year and come as part of this or participate in this study to help advance that. And I guess maybe if, if the state doesn't do it, perhaps one more time, we can do it at a local level and figure out some kind of way to put your know, true training, a local certification in place to ensure that everybody can have, I mean, you just want, you, you want your common areas taken care of, you want to know where your money went, you want to know who spent it where, and right, exactly. Just like you hold us accountable, holding yourselves accountable, right? And so we should be able to help with that. So I yield the floor. I just wanted to highlight that was a very important one. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Uh, both commissioners, we have another presentation. Uh, and it's uh, on the Gary Watson director. So the next up is if you could come up and chat with us about the proposed design for the new the next up is bus stop sign. Yes, ma'am. We had an opportunity to share with the transportation committee, but we want to share yes, with you. Here's what we have for you this morning. And as you can see, this sign is much bigger, much bolder, and much easier to read, especially from a distance than the signs that we have <coughs> now. Um, we wanted to present this to the full board of commissioners this morning for any comments. Uh, <coughs> or changes you'd like to see before we start production of them and replacing the current signs that we have. have Any questions from the board? Commission This is about the sign and the sign looks good. <laughs> but uh, was there ever any... Uh, uh, were y'all thinking about putting... Uh, I don't know what you call them, stands for, for them to sit? Covers or whatever. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> we. What are they called? Well, uh, sh passenger shelters. Shelters. And also okay. benches. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. We we plan to put shelters or benches uh, at several of our our busiest locations. Uh, we'll be doing that throughout 2020 as as we identify our most uh, utilized uh, locations. And are you? Looking at changing some of the routes that are not doing so well. We're we're going we're going to propose changes to three three of our routes, and uh, our process in in that is we've already presented the the proposed changes to the transportation committee. We want to meet with the other three commissioners on a one on one basis and go over these changes with you. And then once we do that, we'll go out to the public. We're planning on having three public meetings uh, in the areas that will be impacted by these changes. And then once we gather the, uh, input from the public to see if they're okay with these changes or if they would like to see us do something else, then we'll come back again to the full board of commissioners uh, for your approval of the changes in the routes. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner. Uh, if you could, uh, Director Watson. What has been ridership so far? What, what have they, it's about 13,000 or 
how many have we had so far? Yes, because I, in 150 days, that's, that's, that number is larger than what our eyes see on the yes, buses. Yes, ma'am. Uh, since we launched on June the 20th, we've had 16,368 boardings. 16,368. That includes individuals who use the basic fixed route service, the, uh, the flex route service, and also the paratransit service. And that, that uh, averages out to about 100 boardings per day since the launch. Now, uh, December was a really good month for us. Um, we had 2,966 uh, basic boardings on the fixed route. And when you uh, add the paratransit and flex uh, trips to that, we averaged about 125 boardings during December. Uh, from November to December, our ridership was up 29%. That's great. And when you take the, what, the number of uh, boardings that we had in December, and compare that to an average of the bo per month boardings for the first six months, we're up 51%. Okay. Okay. You answered my question. Thank you so much. Okay. Yes. Sign looks great. Is it both sides? Yes, ma'am. It, yes. it will be both sides. It will be both sides. How soon do you think we would be able to implement the new signs going up? Well, we, we uh, received three bids on what it's going to cost to have the signs produced. Uh, once we get that purchase order issued and, and give the vendor uh, the go-ahead, we'll, we'll start producing the signs and then as, as we get a few signs at a time, we'll go ahead and start putting them, putting them up at locations. So I would say within the next month to six weeks, you'll start seeing the new signs. Great. Uh, Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner One clarification on your figures that you just gave. You said 16,300 cents kickoff, right? Yes, ma'am. But that includes December when it was free. Mm -hmm. It does. So the, about 3,000 in December, how much more was that for the free ones than it was for a normal? <coughs> well. It was, it was uh, 100 per day. Yes, ma'am. Until December. Well, right? for, well, for an example, and, just, and again, this is just standard fixed route boardings. In December, we had 2,966. In November, we had 2,304. So about almost 700 more in December than, than in November. But it was free, so mm -hmm. <laughs> we really can't go by December. Is well, what I'm but we're. We're, we're looking at the long-term picture because we're hoping that by offering the free rise in December, uh, it may increase. It may yeah. increase in the long run, yes, ma'am. But it kind of distorts the figure for right now, if you see what I'm talking about, because it was free. Sure. More people will, will ride us up in yeah, free. And that, and, <laughs> and that was the exact that, reason that we did that, to try to get more people to ride. Okay, I yield back. Thank you so much. Question, Boston. Yeah, I mean, I won't get into it. <coughs> you know, I, I, I teach decision science at, at the Georgia State as a part-time instructor. Um, and these are just sophomores. And when, when you talk about statistics, right, they're, they're, when you talk about year to date, and, uh, you know, this time last month versus <coughs> the prior month, um, there is seasonality. Um, they're all one-offs. I mean, you factor them in, and it's not a, you don't discount what it tells you. You got to look at it from both perspectives. So you look at the annualized, and you look at it as a one time, right? And so um, anyone can take one part of the, of, of, of the sign and try to rationalize a position. You got to do both, right? So the whole point of making it free was to get more people exposed to it, get used to the route. Does it go where I need it to go? Because when I'm at work, I'm trying to get somewhere. I, I don't have time to, this may not take me where I want to go. So this was a great promotional. It brings exposure. That's the intent, right? To, to get people funk comfortable during a season where they could have done it, right? And while they're going to be out and stuff and get used to it. So I don't want to discount the, the you know, the, the effort that you did, but we acknowledge that um, it, it's not to suggest that it popped up and it's going to ride that high. I mean, anybody who understands statistics, 
that's not how you look at it. Uh, and and that, I don't want, um, to the point of distortion, that, exactly. You don't want to distort what you're looking at. But it should accomplish what it did, would give more exposure to citizens. And again, it's just an option. Everybody's not going to ride the bus. Everybody's not going to take Uber. Um, everybody doesn't have their own car. Everybody has options. This is just one of what, this is our fifth option available to the public. Um, but let's, let's be careful with how we cast, you know, let's be, be, let's be careful of the class system. You know, one of the things I'm hopeful in 2020 is the narrative that has to edge off just, just, just a little. We're neighbors, <coughs> man. To, just, just to hear the marginalization or try to invalidation of, of options that anybody, it's about dignity. Right? So, I had options. I just don't, like, but the other citizens that may not have options, it doesn't make me superior when I choose or not to choose to get on the bus, which I do. I like to get feedback. I love to talk to people on the bus, I love to talk to people in Uber, taxi. It gives me great intelligence outside of the system of the ivory tower. And then like being out there with every, every, everyday citizen, right? you get a lot of intelligence about what's really happening. But, but, but that aside, I, I, I think that this, this system will, 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 continue, will continue to grow and learn. We're, only, we're not even a whole year in yet. It's real early. You, 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 yeah, we compare it month to month. We need to be able to look at this time next year like we do in our financial analysis. When I first came on board, um, I helped enhance that type of reporting. We'd be like, okay, I, I need to see over time. I want to see this time last month, this time last year, Show me multiple months, multiple years over time. We're, 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 we'll mature. It'll get there, but it's still relatively early. We do make the tweaks. Now, last point I want to make about the tweaks. Um, uh, we it did come into the um, transportation committee about um, route changes. We as a board, um, we acknowledged early on that we wanted to make sure that the board would sign off on any type of structural changes. That means routes. We had to come before the full board. So in the committee, um, obviously, it was acknowledged when they brought forward um, the very first set of route changes. Like, okay, well, there was a, there was a desire, like, well, can we just go straight to the shareholders, stakeholder? I'm like, absolutely not. <coughs> it's like we don't want to do it that way. Go to each of the commissioners and get their input. For example, here I am, obviously being the chair of the committee, but <clears throat> I see a route change in District One. It's like, hold on, what now? We will go straight to the citizens, and y'all, we haven't bounced this off to at least the respective district commissioner. So, so, so part of my oversight was to make sure that, to that point, all y'all got to weigh in. Take a look at this. Now, I got my opinion about what happens in District 2, but that's all I can take a position on. Right? So I appreciate um, staff willing to take that input from the district commissioner. Like, okay, now, if you're looking for support for this, you, you may want to get their buy-in, but don't let them get caught off guard. You're out there talking to new citizens about some route changes, and we, we would have experienced the very same thing we experienced before um, about going around downtown Douglas when we first started. So we are maturing as it relates to how to work together, uh, how, how to communicate, because I, I think um, I mean, you, have to, you have to communicate. You, you have to, and Gary, you've done a great job, and I, I know you, <laughs> you have to carry this in such a way. Um, well, because um, obviously it, it, it sometimes it gets politicized, but but but, but thank you for your, your help on making sure citizens um, are going to be involved in the process. Thank you for assuring that the commissioners are involved uh, because we think that's going to be important uh, to make this successful. Are you okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Director Watson. <coughs> okay, we'll move into the actual business items. But before I do, I uh, called in our citizen representative for the um, Senior and Aging Board uh, at ARC, and her name is uh, Mrs. Darlene Kimes. She's here today, but she'll be coming back next week to just give us, I'm sorry, our next meeting, um, work session, just give us an update of things that are happening at the ARC level. Ms. Kimes, thank you for coming in today. We appreciate you, thank you for coming in. And then I have an opportunity for you to meet Juancella, uh, Dr. Gilchrist. Uh, and I'm not sure if y'all have an opportunity to meet yet, and I would love for y'all to chat today if you could. All right, we're going to move on to uh, tab number six, authorization to approve the 2020 West Georgia Regional Library Services Contract and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Moore, how you doing? Hi, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, this is our standard operating contract with the West Georgia Regional Library System to provide um, our materials, budgets, and um, 
our other service of administrative services with our couriers and our cataloging and this is just our standard contract. Okay. Sounds pretty explanatory. Any questions for it? All right, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna move on to tab number seven, authorization to award a contract to CBM Atlanta Incorporation for janitorial services for the Douglas County Courthouse at a cost, an annual cost of one hundred thousand nine hundred and eighty seven dollars and eighty cents. And authorize the chairman to sign um, to sign all related documents. Director Price. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, this is actually a uh, renewal contract for CBM. Uh, about this time last year, we underwent an extensive search for a cleaning contract <coughs> with the aid of the purchasing department and uh, the purchasing committee. Uh, we uh, awarded the contract to CBM in May. Uh, we would just like to renew this contract. The price and the terms have not changed. We just want to continue the contract into 2020. Okay. Well, commissioners, any questions? Uh, Commissioner Carpenter. Hi, Mr. Price. Happy yes. New Year. Happy New Year. Um, have CBS performed to your standards? Everything is good? Yes, ma'am. They certainly have. Okay. All They've right. They've taken good care of us. All right. I just wanted to know that before we authorize the board again. Thank you for what you do. Thank you. All right. Okay, thank you so much. Right. All right, we'll move on to tab number eight, authorization to award a 2020 cleaning uh, services for the Douglas County Transportation Center to parks, um, janitorial service in the amount of $18,000 and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. Director uh, Watson. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> that toward the end of the year, uh, we solicited bids for cleaning services for the Transportation Center and the addition uh, that we're currently building. Um, we drafted a, a request for proposals and put it on our website and we also uh, sent out emails, letters, and phone calls to about a dozen uh, cleaning companies. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we asked for them to respond to us by December the 6th. Uh, we received two bid proposals back from that request. Uh, JNS Janitorial, which is a mi minority firm located here in Douglasville, uh, and they've been providing our services for, for about the last five <coughs> years. Uh, they offered a bid to us for $18,000 a year. We got a second bid from Atlanta West Facility Maintenance. Their bid was $83,814. So, so based on uh, our previous experience with Jane is janitorial and the fact that we, we did solicit uh, bids from an, of a number of other companies and didn't get any response. Uh, we're asking that the board uh, award the contract for Jane is janitorial. Okay. Any questions from the board? Thank you. Why does it say parks um, <coughs> According what? to the list, it says Parks. I'm, just, I'm, I'm sorry, that's it's Parks. Okay, Parks. Oh, that's yeah. what it is. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I apologize for here. that. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah. We appreciate you. Right. Once. And then you have one more yes, authorization to award a 2020 lawn maintenance services at the Douglas County Transportation Center to alternative environments in the amount of $19,611.58 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director yes, ma'am. We followed the same process with our lawn maintenance as we did the cleaning services, put the request for proposals on our website, uh, contacted uh, about a dozen uh, companies uh, through email, letters, some calls. Uh, and again, with this, we only got one response from Alternative Environments. They've been, been providing our services for a number of years. We're very satisfied with them, and it would be our, our request that the board award the contract for long maintenance to Alternative Environments. Okay. Please have explanatory anything board. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Vice Chairman Yeah, I mean, so again, one, one big, one response. I mean, alternative environments have been around a while. Uh, when I used to live in um, Mount Vernon, uh, you know, they, they gave a, uh, some, some, some fancy flowers. Not what I did, it was my wife at the time did that. And I think it was about $3,000 for, for something, but uh, for this whole landscaping package. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar, with, familiar, I know them, all right? So I, I know this firm, uh, and, and so, uh, but I appreciate the fact that um, uh, you're satisfied with, with their work. Is that yes, true? Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, and, and, and that. So, um, since you mentioned it, at the, you're talking about transportation services, right? Right up the street? Mm-hmm. Right. 
um, since we're talking about that, I think it would be sufficient. Um, will there be any landscaping around the new area that's being expanded, or not necessarily, or, the, or <coughs> any, any of that? Uh, Mowing just in general? Uh, not really. In, in, in fact, uh, we'll likely be taking away uh, spaces really? that they've been taking care of previously. Okay. Right, so we, we lose a little bit on that. So how does that work? So we want scopes to work. If things ever change, do we ever go back and revisit those contracts or we just sort of let them ride? In other words, it's less work than we anticipate, do they? Do we care? I mean, I'm just curious. How does that work? Yeah, sure, all of that would be taken into consideration. Good. Let go for now. We're good. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Are you good? Okay. One quick question. Uh, does it include the retention pond? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Because uh, you don't have very much maintenance right. elsewhere. <laughs> no, we, we have two retention ponds, and this contract includes cleaning those two retention ponds out twice a year. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for that, Watson. And last but not least, we have tab number 10, authorization to approve an engagement letter, well, approve engagement letters with Malton, Malden and Jenkins for the performance uh, of an external audit and financial statement preparation for 2019 for the amount of $67,000 and landfill financial assurance at $2,225 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Holman. Yes, um, good morning. Good morning. Um, this is just the basic standard letters um, that need to be engaged in order for Malden and Jenkins to begin their FY. 19 audit. Um, they um, have been with us. This will be their third audit. Um, <clears throat> they started with us um, and began auditing us for fiscal year in 2017. Of course, they did 18, and then this would be 19. Um, we did uh, go out for bid um, when their first year here <clears throat> was in 2017. And we have been having <coughs> services. Okay. Any questions for the Sure. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is maybe Director Hall and, 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 and Director Evers. All right, so um, this is called a, this will be considered what, professional services? Yes. Yes, okay. So this is professional services. And where does this fall in the context of our um, internal controls? Um, was it, what, what's the threshold? Less than 50,000, more than 50,000? Don't answer that first one. Where, where would this fall? And my question is, um, as far as um, bidding out. I'm just curious how does it work. Anything over fifty thousand has to be bid out. Okay. Has to be bid out. All right. All right. Except for professional services. Except for professional services. As long as professional services has the approval of the entire board, we're able to process it with that. We we'll process the, the, the paperwork and pay it, right? Right. Got it. Okay. So and so back up a minute, um, Director Hallman. So um, the, the, the prior auditor we had for a long time when I first came on board, right? They ran for about 10 years. And then we Around eight or 10 years. It, yes. okay, mm -hmm. that's fine. And then we, we, we thought it was sufficient to outsource it, and so we did, and we got this group. Yes, sir. Um, and yet you are satisfied with them. There was a transition mm -hmm. <laughs> we had to go through. They were very stringent on us. Yes, very. Um, that first year was, as always, with any new auditors, it's a little tough. Yeah. Um, GFOA also um, has their best practices um, to follow, yes. and um, they suggest that you have multi-year agreements of at least five years okay. with auditors. Um, they say that these agreements um, allow for a greater uh, continuity, and they help minimize the potential for disruption in connection with independent audit. Um, they also say they help reduce audit costs um, by allowing auditors to recover certain startup costs over several years rather than over a single year. Right. So everybody, everybody has self-interest. Everybody got to make money. They got to okay. make their money back, right? Uh -huh. Okay. We'll, we'll come back to that later. All right. So, so that to that point, um, you're satisfied with their efforts and stuff. Uh, we think we're stable now. We're what we have, to your point, going on third year. Yes, sir. We should be okay. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and again, you guys do a great job of providing the financial structure and work with them. It seems like you guys have a pretty good working relationship. From an oversight, I don't get involved that much in that. Obviously, that's a formal, very formal process independently. But I do watch it. Obviously, I get concerned every now and then when we identify we had to do a restatement, mm -hmm. um, 1.2 million dollars uh, because of um, the way we we collectively 
handled, um, what was that for? The, um, the Greta. The Greta, and how we handled that whole situation and right away acquisition and things associated with Lee Road. And so, um, obviously, that catches my attention. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that would obviously, anytime you have to restate something, it's like, whoa, back up now um, for mistakes, not typos. Material mistakes, which which I, I think is <coughs> something that we want to be uh, careful of. But again, I think we're going to be fine going forward. I'm good. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you so much, uh, Director. <coughs> uh, it is 11 11. Uh, Board of Commissioners, before I call for uh, an executive session, just wanted to uh, bring to your attention <coughs> that uh, typically, customarily, uh, the chairman make uh, committee assignments at the beginning of the year, and I've decided to do something a little different. There will be no immediate uh, changes to your um, committees uh, because we have a lot of projects in the pike right now. So I don't want to change any of the committees because we've got a lot of things going on at this time. Um, I know I look at the list every year and then try to decide who's going to sit on each committee. But we have quite a few projects and we have a new website that we have that's coming down the pike. we got some new things in purchasing. We'll be looking at um, not only just, uh, we're going to look at all our contracts, and those things are important. So we've got quite a few things that are moving, and I feel that it's appropriate that we just not tamper with it at this time, if that's okay with the board. Okay? What I'm going to do, um, Attorney Bernard, yes, do we have a need to go into executive session? We do, uh, Madam Chair, for litigation, uh, land, and personnel. Okay, Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to go into executive session? So we'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please indicate by raising your right hand if you should. Okay, we do. I'll uh, take a five minute break and we'll just come right back in and we'll move this meeting along. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Board of Commissioners, anything else to come before this board? Um, Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah, th thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just one comment. Um, based on public comment earlier, um, a couple of citizens were asking questions about Empowered Douglas. And really, all of it is related to tourism of how we got this. Obviously, the conversation that we've been going on since August. Um, I, I'm hopeful that I think there's enough commissioners that can put this on the agenda for our very next meeting for everybody to come out, including the Sentinel. Uh, to, to come here about where we are uh, regarding that matter, how we got here. Um, um, this, this is not just isolated to that. It wasn't just brand new. Um, but nevertheless, I won't, I won't rehash that at this moment, but it's something obviously we can all um, get up to speed on um, um, at our next meeting. So I, I, I think that there's enough people who say we can at least discuss whatever that is in a, in a public forum. There's no sense of playing things through the media. It's funny. Uh, on one hand, Madam Guyer's on the phone one minute, and um, the signal had me on the other line, and they're going back, and I'm like, okay, this is silly. Let's just, you know, let's just go ahead and have a, a public conversation uh, regarding wh where the Board of Commissioners have made decisions along the way, um, how staff has responded to that, and how we've gotten where we're at, right? So I, I, what, I'm, what I'm careful of and conscious of is everybody claiming we don't know how, like, okay, let's just put it all on the table. Let's see what we saying. And let the public decide on what that, that, that set of facts are. There's no closed door, there's no closet stuff going on. Let's be transparent about it. And, and, but at the same point, we have to move forward. Um, and so I, I, I just wanted to bring that up because I, 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 I've been on vacation for the past couple weeks, intensely out of pocket. Um, just don't, don't really, you know, so every now and then you do have to unplug from the matrix. And so for that reason, um, I, I, I did unplug, but now that I'm back, and I'm hearing, um, you know, innuendos, and it's like, mm -hmm. that wasn't a big tent. It was always in the public view. But sometimes people are only focusing on what they want to focus on, or only what they understand. They're like, this is all related. But we'll take care of that next week. So I yield that. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Guida. Just one comment. I never heard of Empower Douglas. Uh, I heard the name Watkins or Watson or whatever. Never knew what they were supposed to do. They should have come before this board and talked to us, and you should have disclosed that you were a member of that. So, uh, I I don't call the newspaper; they call me, and I will always talk to the media. So I yield. 
Well, thank you so much, Mr. Carpenter. Yes, yeah, business item number five, uh, the authorization to approve the other contract with JAG. I wonder if we can table that until we talk to Solicitor General, um, um, Attorney Dawson, ask that we stay, yeah. so maybe, you know, if that's okay with you. What I have, um, we've had a brief discussion with seven the county administrator, I was just going to see if the solicitor has an opportunity to speak okay. with um, Judge Barker before tomorrow, and okay. then we'll, we'll determine that and, okay. and determine whether it will be on the agenda for tomorrow. Okay. Madam Chair, can I uh, say one thing that I did not address and exactly best find that it's outside in a public forum? Uh, Heritage Crystal Clean, there's some kind of class action claim against Heritage Crystal Clean. We, government entities are excluded from the claim, but for some reason Douglas County name is as part of the class members. In order to preserve any claims, if they exist at all, we're filing a claim form, but I'm telling y'all the uh, class action settlement notice purports that any uh, any settlement people cannot be governmental entities. So we're not sure why the county's name's on there, but out as a abundance of precaution, we're gonna fill the claim form out and see what happens, but I don't expect anything to come from it based on our read of the uh, class action settlement documents, okay? But I uh, we're doing that so that we don't get excluded if we could have been included, but we don't think we're included based on the reading of the documents, but somehow the county's name's tied up in the class action. We don't know how. Okay. okay? So we will file that and report back as the need arises. Okay, thank you. If there's nothing else. Yep. Yeah, just real quick, Bill, no, no, I'm not going to let that stay as a, as a public statement. Um, I'm not on the board of Kings and Priests. That's a lie, right? I was associated with that through any other ministry. I'm probably associated with at least 45 different boards and little small firms that, well, of course, everybody would like to have Commissioner Robinson and Kelly Robinson as an individual on their board. There's nothing wrong with knowing people. There's nothing wrong with ministry. There's nothing wrong with that. I know entrepreneurs, I'm involved in their process. I mean, that, 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 that's my platform for education. Five years at World Changers, it was the Business Networks. Five years with Kings and Priests. Five years with the Broader Business Institute, which we took people over there from this county to promote entrepreneurship, to promote people for development of people. So I sit on the board. So what? They're neighbors. They're people in the community. Like all y'all sit on the board and call them people. I don't not acknowledge people. I don't I don't disavow that. Anybody who called to no point, that, that wasn't the point. The point is, you know, it, it's simply what is the problem here? This was simply a conversation and we said, well, how did No they didn't. The board can appropriate whatever it wants to, just like with those body cameras with the shirt. Don't do that. We know what our powers are. We know that they have to come before us. But this was associated with that, um, the, the, the tourism. You had these marketing plan that, that, that came before us that the Board of Commissioners can get input and say, no, I don't like that. Change this. We're not puppet heads. We have opinion. So if you look at the marketing plan to sit up and figure out how we're going to spend that $400,000 that we've already had an illegal process and we're outside our timeline, that's where this came from. Don't sit there and say, like, this came from nowhere. We sat there and watched it and it was like, okay, so that firm is supposed to be doing this. They were part of the broader marketing plan. Like, that's what I'm like, no, no, don't, don't go there. Like, don't, don't make this about Kelly Robinson. No, don't make this about Kelly Robinson. This was just something that was as simple as you have, neighbor, you have people in the community that can provide work, that can help us with the solution. We were dissatisfied with performance. So we, we modified that. We dissatisfied with the illegal process. Like, okay, we'll fix it right. But to suggest anything, I'm just sitting back like, okay, I ain't got nothing to do with that. I don't deliver work. But it's nothing wrong with acknowledging people in the community. That people are there. Like when they say, well, who are they? I'm like, well, who are you? That person's been here for 30 years. And it, it's like, it's like, don't. It, it, you, you, again, I, I, I'm saying this now so that you can, you, you, the comments can be prepared a little bit better 
it will walk into a very sharp conversation in, in next Thursday. It's not necessary. You know, you tell them before you tell them. It's what they call, what, discovery. Like, don't do that. Right? That's, that's not what this is about. <coughs> right? This has nothing to do with Commissioner Robinson. Right? People can be acknowledged. Their neighbors in this community, their neighbors. is 150,000 strong. If you got 3,000, think the world rotate around them, it's going to be 3,001. Like, don't, 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 don't do that. Like, there are people out there that have been here all along that can bring great value. 80% of people go over to Atlanta. You got the rain people sitting over here and they're just feeding on this system. Just feeding on this system. <coughs> just feeding. Right? And yet, okay, it's the bad break. I mean, somebody, look, it's professional services. Y'all ain't paying attention. It's, the, it's professional services. The list of marketing that was associated with that marketing plan had a list of things from Southern Living to all types of things that, you know, I'll, I'll just go ahead and say it like, okay, well, have y'all really audited what we've gotten so far for the efforts to date? Like, eighty thousand dollars for that? Nobody's questioning it. Nobody said it. Like, really? Okay. So I'm only saying that like, it, it, it's not about the twenty-five or that just some type of illegal broken brush. Like, no, nah, guys. If you go there, we'll turn the whole thing upside down. Don't do that. Look at it for what it was. The Board of Commissioners were taking corrective actions against what we thought was, huh, you, it was, what was the conversation earlier? Subpar. That, that, that was the intent. Right? So it's just one little enhancement of a $100 million budget. We're getting new. And yet we just come out of conversations of $21 million worth of errors. Uh huh. All right. So I, I only, with, with that comment again, it's not about, really, it's not about me and you. It's not about my involvement in anything. Um, I, I, um, as, as far as um, some implied, um, you know, um, benefits, there is none. I just I, my, my benefit it, just because I can make the decision to vote how I want to freely. I I, I don't need no. Uh, I don't need that. Now that may be the way the system was built. Maybe that's what they call transference. That well, they must be like no. Nah, they're not even gonna run into somebody like no. Nah, because I can go in a different direction. I, I don't have to do it that way. So the politics of this is like, this is 2020. I appreciate the comments of, of unity, though know, sometimes they're disingenuous um, at best. I, I'm hopeful that as we go into this 150th, that it's sincere, that, that, that it really is true, right? And, and that, that there is no politics. Do we really care that we're all neighbors? Everybody gets to participate. If the same old people don't have to get the same old contract year over year over year. There's other people that can bring value. Other very stellar professional people that are here that can add value. Just because you don't know them, don't invalidate and marginalize who they are. Now, it has nothing to do with me. I just happen to see them because I'm in a different circle of people. Your circle, you know, different than my circle. We all cast our vote respectfully. We all cast our vote. So I'm going to leave it at that right now. Again, I prefer first meeting, first year. <coughs> Again, we're doing good. Uh, but but I, I don't want to start off like that. I just, we ended on a year. We, we ended in a way we probably would not have wanted to. Uh, but it was probably some rep repressed understandings of, of just where we are. I, I, I pray that we pause, just recalibrate. Think about what I just said. Like, okay, there's more to this. Now we pretend like it didn't happen. And, and it will set the course for the rest of the year. And that's not really what you want. So I know. <coughs> All right, Board of Commissioners, so any other comments before we move forward? Uh, Commissioner Carpenter and then. I do you want us to move forward. Um, I, I just want to say this for record. I want to take a page out of your book when you told the constituent to not attack. Let's not attack each other. We are here to do business for the county, period. Everybody here knows that there are open records. We should be above reproach in any area. We know what the ethics, Commissioner, we took that class. Each and every one of us took that class. So we know what the ethics commission states for us. We know what we took an oath to to attack one another on this board. 
allows for others outside this board to attack us. And that's not what we're here for. God willing, we are all here for a season to do a job. That is the job which the people elected us to do. We're not going to always get along. We're not going to always side on the issues. We're not going to always have the same vote. But we should all respect one another's opinions, votes, likes, and dislikes, and not attack each other. Because again, we all are neighbors. We're all here in Douglas County. We're all here paying taxes. We all want this county to be progressive, to be good, to leave a county that is great for the next generation to come. Let's, let's not attack each other and point fingers and make innuendos that we know is divisive and disruptive. I am. Mean, okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Carpenter. That is very well said and something that echoed the, my words uh, at our last meeting. And certainly at this, we're going to start this year off right. It has to go forward. 2020 is a big year for growth and development in this county. Uh, we have nowhere to go but up. Uh, all the bickering and all those things and the disrespect for each other will stop. I've I, uh, just been blown away by some of the behavior, but we're not going to talk about that today. I just want to move forward. And I know we can do better, and we are professionals. And uh, we talk about uh, Commissioner Mitchell. Uh, he's not here today, but he always talks about the process. So I want to follow the process. That process should be a, a, a across the board and the standard for all of us. So anything should never be a, a surprise to any board members. We all should be aware of what's going on. We shouldn't be sidetracked or at the last minute something is thrown on the agenda and that, that will not happen going forward in my administration. Things just jumping on the agenda at the last minute, you all voting and uh, recommending and things at the last minute. I'm going, wait a minute, I've never heard of this. So we won't do this this year and, and any year going forward. Uh, we all deserve respect and at least the opportunity to analyze it, to evaluate certain items and options so we can make um, good decisions, not ones that everybody's bickering over and, and, and we're fighting because there will be no infighting on this board. We are here representing the citizens of Douglas County and they hired us and they elected us to do the right thing and we will do the right thing. With that being said, Board of Commissioners, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.